In other cultures, all of them are dismissed as angels. But here, different quality beings have been identified as different types. You call for a particular being for a particular kind of benefit, so that you have an advantage of achieving things much more than you would do by your normal strength and capabilities. In this tradition, we have various kinds of beings. They are all particularly identified according to their quality. We have humans and of course the animal nature and all those things that you can see in… around you. Those beings that you cannot see, there are some which we call as Bhuta Preta category. There are other beings that we call as yakshas. There are other kinds of beings that we call as gandharvas. And there are devas. So based on this, there are tree gods, there are monkey gods, there are elephant gods, there is fruit god, there is vegetable god, there is flower god. For everything there is a God. Is this all figment of imagination? No, it is… everything is happening because of certain forces. They identified these forces and personified them and created a method as to how to find access to them. So these yagnas, who are processes through which you can find access to certain forces in the existence so that you have an advantage of achieving things much more than you would do by your normal strength and capabilities. The word yagna has been translated as uh, sacrifice. So you… the English word sacrifice you would always understand as giving up something for something else or giving up something for nothing, that's a sacrifice, okay? Giving up something for something else is commerce. Giving up something for nothing is sacrifice. <laughs> so, yagna need not necessarily mean uh, a sacrifice. Probably, yagna is a combination of an offering, an oblation and a s sacrifice. It's a mixture of all these three things, a ritual through which uh, you can please certain forces in the existence. In other cultures, generally they have not been properly identified and classified, all of them are dismissed as angels. But here, different quality beings have been identified as different types and accordingly you call for a particular being for a particular kind of benefit, there is a whole process in science behind it. Even today people are using these yagas and yagnas. Generally for a lot of them it may not work because it's not being properly conducted the way it should be. But for many people it does work. There are many, many people who are hugely benefited by these things. People do achieve what they want to do in the material world by using yagas and yagnas in a certain way. Even though it doesn't matter how educated they are and uh, how much elaboration they talk about, even today, ninety-five percent of the Indians, if they want to enter a new home, they will do yagas and yagnas before they get in. Only here at Visha, Isha we don't do anything because uh, we are a different breed. If you are in a certain level of consciousness and energy, everything that you do is a yagna. You don't have to do a separate ritual, the very way you live is a yagna. So yagnas are of different kinds. Yagna means a certain means to access a dimension which is right now not in your excess. One is a ritualistic yagna that you perform something, an expert in the field comes and does something for you through which you receive some benefit or you have made your very life process into your yagna. Now 
you sit in the morning and you're doing your shakti chalana kriya or your shambhavi mahamudra this is an internal yagna without the sense of offering you will never know the essence of that practice if you make this a process it's a very powerful yagna through which things happen in the world not just for yourself things will happen around you beautifully we have been saying constantly if 1% of the world can become meditative the remaining 99% will just pass very easily because if 1% of the world really begins to function every moment of their life their very life process is yagna if they become like this the 99% will reap the benefit without doing anything about it one person plants a mango tree 100 people can eat it one person cannot eat what comes out of one tree it takes 100 people to eat it so similarly if you have made your life process it, itself into a yagna if you have made your life process itself into an offering then thousands of people can eat out of it you would see simple woman just they made their life into total sacrifice people for people who live around them in their families they just cook they serve they never thought about themselves what about me never came to them you see they are sage like by themselves my mother was a living example like this she was educated enough but her whole life was just serving her husband and children that's all never we heard her telling us i love you but such a question never arose whether she loves me or not never arose in our minds because the very way she lives is in complete sacrifice for everybody around us, us. and nobody ever uttered anything about it but in many ways she was a goddess by herself everybody treated her as such if she has to eat her morning breakfast everybody in the family would have eaten then she will take a part of her breakfast and go to the backyard she will look for ant hills you know nest of ants and she will feed all the ants first and then only she will eat in today's mind people may think feeding ants what nonsense spray insecticide isn't it? she if it came into the house if it her bit her children she also did that but uh, somewhere in her mind she felt the ants have as much right to live on this planet as she had and just that little offering everything is a sacrifice everything is a yagna